This is the second part of the introduction to Verilog and ModelSim. And in this part, we are going to take a look at behavioral specification and actually put that into ModelSim and then try out whether it really works. In the first part of this introduction, we were looking at the structural specification of a very simple circuit, um, x not ended with y. And in fact, here is the circuit that we were implementing. And the structural description just had a NOT gate in it and an AND gate. Now we're going to take a look at the behavioral description and both the continuous form of it, the continuous assignment, and the procedural assignment. So we add a new file to our project. And we do this by right-clicking, Add to Project, New File. And we're going to call it End, and then Cont for Continuous. And we again make sure that we make a Verilog file and not the VHDL file. And we will also want the test bench for that, so we are going to add another file here. And for continuous and count for continuous and then TB for the test bench and make it a very log file. And we're going to start from editing the end uh, continuous description. So this is now um, a behavioral specification. and a continuous assignment. All right, just a little practice here on the comments in Verilog. And then we start again with the keyword module for beginning the whole thing. Then we have the end cont, underbar cont, and um, input x, y, and then an output of f. Don't forget the semicolon. Then input uh, is x and y. Output is f. So nothing changes here compared to the structural description. But now for the actual definition of the function, we should simply write assign f equal to, and then we write the Boolean expression for it. So tilde x and y, so that means not x ended with y. And then we write n module. And this is for the end continuous. So we save it. And we can go now and compile this whole thing. And we can see that we were successful. We didn't make any mistake in doing that. And then we need the test bench so that we can actually see whether it's doing the right thing. So what we're going to do here is we're just simply going to copy the test bench that we did for the uh, structural implementation of that AND gate. And we're going to open here the test bench for the continuous case. And we're just pasting it in. Okay, so I'm going to change here the naming so that it reflects what we really have. It's especially important here where we talk about the module under test. We have to, uh, of course, do the right module uh, for the testing. So here's where we specify which module we want to do. The MUT name, that's just the name that we gave for, the, for that particular instantiation. So that can remain the same. Then we um, again make a clock and the counter based on that clock, so that stays the same. And then the test bench now has a different name. 
it is end with an underbar of cont and tb and we will also change that here at the top that is just a comment so that wouldn't matter too much but if we look at this later we want to be able to find out what we did okay so we compile this one and then we go to simulate so I'll bring this down a little bit so that we get to see what I'm doing. So simulate, start simulation. Then um, I have to go to the work function again or the work subdirectory. And now I want to do the continuous um, assignment here, the behavioral specification with the continuous assignment. So I'm opening this one. And I, on the test bench, add the wave to it so that gives me that display, the wave display. And then I also want to display what actually is happening in the module under test. I add the wave here. We can see that I'm not actually going to learn too much new because we don't have any internal variables anymore. We have just the input x, the input y, and the output f. So in this particular case, I could just have. Um, done this without adding the, the module on the test explicitly. So we run this again for 100 nanoseconds. We zoom in on this and take a look at that and we can see that for uh, 0, 0 we get an output of 0, for 0, 1 we get an output of 1 as we were expecting with the uh, x being inverted and the y being not inverted and then ended. And then we get 0 for the case 1, 0, and x is 1, y is 0, and, the, and 0 for the case when x is 1 and y is 1. So that works as we were expecting. And then we end the simulation by going to end simulation. So we get back to our editing system here. We change back to project and now we want to do the behavioral specification with procedural assignments. So we're going to add two more files to this. So that will be end. Oops. Should have gone here. Okay, so end and then we're going to write here uh, procedural. So it's, uh, it's a behavioral specification with procedural assignments. So those are the assignments where you can put in if else statements or case statements or you can put for loops in here and so on. Okay, so we make this a very log file again. <coughs> then we add the test bench as well. So that is end, and then we have um, proc again and tb for test bench, and we make it very log, and we're going to edit the um, the proc file first. So let's see, we go here. So this is now. Uh, behavioral specification and uh, procedural assignment. Okay, and then we start with the module keyword. This is end proc. Inputs remain the same, x, y, and the output is going to be f. And so we make now input x, y, output f, and then we make an always block, always at x, y, 
so that's the sensitivity list so that we know when we actually have to go through that always block here. Then we write um, if x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1, then we want to have an output f equal to 1 b1 and then an else f is equal to 1 b0. So there is a one apostrophe too much. So this just specifies that we want to have an output of 1 in the first case and it's 1 bit wide and in the second case also an also one bit wide but an output of zero. Then we go to end module here. And now you can guess whether there's going to be an error in the compilation or not. So let's take a look. Okay, and so it actually fails even with two errors, not just one. Let's take a look what uh, the compile report says. Okay, so there is an illegal reference to the net f. So what we did here, uh, on purpose, because you will probably run into that um, sooner or later when you write your own code, is we have just been using the same kind of specification for input and output as we have been doing for the continuous forms of assignment, either structural or the behavioral and continuous one. Continuous assignments, we, can, we basically assign wires to uh, the output and that wire goes to whatever the next module is. But if we have a procedural assignment, then we don't have a continuous output. We have to uh, actually store the output. It, the output gets computed inside the always block. And then we have to store the result until it gets computed for the next time. And so we actually have to make this output f a register. Okay, so output uh, reg f. And if we compile now, then we should probably be fine. Let's save it and then file this thing. And so indeed we are successful. Another thing that you will find as you work more with Verilog is that sometimes it will happen that you have uh, that you want to have an input and an output put to a register. That's not gonna work. Okay, you cannot connect two things together which are both registers. The registers are reserved for the outputs and the inputs, they are then just wires which get connected to the registers. At any rate, we now have to do the um, test bench for that procedural assignment to test it out. So we pick one of those which we have done already. We just copy over the contents of that and we're going to put that into that procedural Bench. So we write here proc and then we have to make sure again that we test the, the right module which is the end proc. Uh, everything else remains the same because we have the same kind of inputs and outputs and notice that the output here that is just going to be a wire uh, because that output that f in here that acts basically from the point of view of the test bench that acts as an input for the output f that's being generated in the module under test. So if we would make this a register then we would actually get a complaint from the compiler. Okay, so we go back up here. We have to call this also proc. And then we have the one up here which we call proc. And now hopefully we have everything relabeled the right way. So we save it. And then we compile it. And it was successful. So now we click on the simulate tab again, start the simulation. 
go into the work directory and now we're going to check out the end proc TV. Okay, and we are going to add the wave again for the test bench itself and then audio on the test. Even though again that doesn't give us anything more because now that we specify things in a behavioral fashion, we, we are not really going to be worried about the internals and we are not specifying the internals, so we don't get any input from there. So we run this, we zoom here to the full range again, move this over, and we find that the output f is um, 0 for 0, 0, it is 1 for 0, 1, then it is 0 for 1, 0, and it is 0 for 1, 1. And then it, it repeats periodically. So this does indeed work, and we have now seen the three methods how we can specify uh, this particularly simple circuit in Verilog, but um, you will be able to use that for more complicated cases as well. So let's end the simulation here, and then uh, we will just take a brief look once more at the three uh, things that we were doing. So we, we started out with the structural description, and I have to find that here, and struct, here we go. Okay, so there's the structural description where we put in the NOT gate and the AND gate explicitly and wired those up. Then we had the continuous form of the behavioral description. So that is this one here. And here we just assigned to the output f the Boolean function that we want to be uh, computed. And then there was the third one, the procedural one, the behavioral specification with procedural assignment. And here we had this always block that we had to make. You cannot use the if-else statement outside of a procedural block. And we at the same time also had to put in the register for the output f.